What's up everyone, this is Rayuka here, and today I'll be giving my thoughts on the Mortal Kombat 11 reveal event. So just be aware, there may be some language. And for those who missed out on uh, their live stream anyways, I'll leave a link down below in the description so y'all can catch up if y'all want to see uh, what the reveal event for Mortal Kombat 11 was about. Now that I got that out of the way, it's time for me to drop my thoughts. <laughs> so... Oh yeah, there was a lot revealed in this event, sort of. I mean, a lot of it was leaked. I mean, given that uh, it was triple, quadruple confirmed that uh, Ronda Rousey is uh, voicing Sonya Blade. I had mixed feelings about that. Uh, I felt like they could have had just made a whole new female character and have her voice that character instead of replacing the voice actress that was already doing Sonya Blade in the previous Small Combat. But hey, it's whatever. I have no control over how they uh, handle their voice actors. But that's just my opinion. So uh, outside of that, uh, they also showed more of the story stuff. Uh, for those who don't know, at the end of Mortal Kombat X, there was after credit scene where Raiden drops Shinnok's head off to uh, Dark Empress Katana and Dark Emperor Liu Kang. He just drops it there as a warning and he bounces. In the story, though, what they're showing is that it takes place before that event, pretty much explaining how Shinnok got his head cut off. And there was an interesting exchange of words between Shinnok and Raiden, Dark Raiden at this point. You know, Raiden's torturing him, and Shinnok is just taking it in, and then Shinnok is very, almost seems to be very aware of what's going on. It seems like he knows more than what he's leading on to know. But... Everything is connected with this amulet that uh, <laughs> that Raiden has. It seems like this amulet that he's holding uh, it's, it's gonna have a bigger role, Pro possibly. Maybe it gets destroyed and everything goes into a big funk. Who knows what? But um, the part that I find interesting in what Shinnok said was when he said that you can't kill other god, elder god. You can't, you know, he can't be killed. But um. Raiden made it pretty clear that he could kill him. Well, at least sort of. I mean, he cut his head off, which now is pretty much explained how that happened. But Shinnok seemed to still be there. You know, he seemed to be aware of, hey, my head was just cut off, but I really can't talk. And then time froze, and then you see that new female character walk in, and she's not pleased about anything that happened. And it seems like, She's gonna, not seems like it, it's, it's quite clear she's gonna have a big role to do with the story. Not only her, but Dark Raiden as well. And there's gonna be, I'm assuming and speculating that there's gonna be a lot of back and forth in time stuff. Possibly maybe them going to different universes, maybe different dimensions, who knows what. But it seems like it's gonna get really crazy with the story. And that would be interesting too if they, if they do go through different dimensions, different universes. Or multiverses where outcomes played out differently and that's what everyone's going to see most likely who knows what that's just my speculation but that will be interesting instead of just going back in time just going to different universes where different things played out differently but who knows right imagine if if everyone visits the uh armageddon universe where more combat armageddon happened like everyone actually gets to see what happens when uh what happened afterwards when uh was it Shao Kahn killed uh, Raiden? Like, how that world turned out. That would be interesting. Um, but who knows what, man. This, it seems like the story's gonna get real crazy. Outside of that, though, they did show a few characters in their trailer. I mean, there was quite a few to see. I mean, you saw, Ra you saw Liu Kang, Kung Lao, Sub-Zero, Scorpion, obviously, Sonya Blade, um, obviously Baraka, and that was interesting to see Baraka. Um, Baraka definitely looks monstrous. That's how he should look, like a monster. Um, but his fatality, and that's another thing. They did show a lot of fatalities here, and, and at least in their reveal event. And whew, Man, those fatalities are no joke, especially Baraka's, man. He eats your brain, like stabs your brain, eats your brain. That's, <laughs> that's just twisted. Uh, a lot of the fatalities are twisted, especially Scarlet. I mean... She's just taking your blood out and then stabbing you with your blood and kills you. It's just brutal. A lot of brutal stuff going on. So Mortal Kombat 11 is definitely, definitely more brutal in my opinion for what I've seen so far. Um, and then 
there's been um, some speculation that uh, there's some form of censorship going on with the female characters because of how they're pretty much covered up for most of the time. For instance, Scarlett, a lot of people pointed out, oh, well, you know, she's covered up a lot. What's going on? Why she doesn't have her costume from uh, the comic or from Mortal Kombat 9? I personally, my opinion on that, I don't think that there's <laughs> censorship, so to say, on the female characters. Um, that's just my opinion. It's a wait and see. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they, if the characters have their classic costumes as an option because they did show customization. And man, there's a lot to go through with the customization stuff for what it seemed like. Um, the customization seems almost pretty endless. Almost. I say that loosely. I mean, there's obviously a limit, but I wouldn't be surprised if uh, their classic costumes or classic costume pieces, however they do the customization, wind up in there. So to say that there's censorship, eh, I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, the amount of gore and violence that's in Mortal Kombat 11, yeah, I, I can't really agree with the whole censorship thing. You know, they're censoring the females. I, I don't I don't think so, but I could be wrong. Maybe there is something going on that I, I did not notice, but I personally don't think there is no censorship, so to say, on, on the female characters. Um, and that's another thing. We didn't get to see, or I didn't get to see, no one didn't get to see the whole roster. I mean, given they did show the roster, like you get to see, I guess, the roster in a way, but a lot of it was obviously blocked out because, well... They're not going to reveal all the characters. And the roster is roughly 25 characters. And um, not counting the pre-order bonus uh, Shao Kahn. So it's like 26. And I have to say, um, I'm not happy with the roster number. I feel like uh, the roster should have been 30 characters out the gate. I mean, this is Mortal Kombat 11. It makes no sense why the roster is at 25 characters. So... That is disappointing for me to see. The fact that the roster is uh, 25 characters, well, 26 technically with uh, Shao Kahn being a pre-order bonus, but still, it, it shouldn't be that number. I feel like the roster should have been easily, bam, 30 characters. But uh, it is what it is. And they know they're going to get away with it because they know more Combat 11 is going to sell like hotcakes. It's, <laughs> it's going to sell. So, uh, But for me personally... I'm not happy with the roster size. I feel like the roster could have easily been 30 characters out the gate. But it is what it is. Um, then they showed off... Man, that was quite a bit to go through. Uh, they showed off Garrus, the new character. He's a new guy. Um, it makes me wonder what's his role in the story as well. He seems like uh, he's going to have somewhat of an important role. And talking about Garrus, it was also some of the stuff that he said as well. He has some interesting stuff. He I mean, he's he was lived quote unquote for like millions of years or whatever. And he comes off as if he himself's an elder god. So I'm curious to see if he is an elder god of some sort. Um, because Raiden seemed to know who he is. So if Raiden's obviously an elder god, then is he an elder god? Like like what's going on here? You know, and that's what I'm curious to see. Who is he? What's he about? And what's his importance to the story? And then they show gameplay of this character and uh he has some tracer going on, you know, from Overwatch with the whole like he'll attack and then he'll like rewind his attack or whatever it is, and then he has like some sort of Doomfist thing going on. And the reason why I'm doing the comparison is because it sort of reminded me of those characters. I mean, he has attacks where he's like rewinding and fast forwarding or whatever. And then like he could make his fist bigger and then punch the shit out of your face. Like it's pretty crazy. And talking about crazy, his fatality is brutal. I mean, this guy is punching holes in you and then he palms you so hard in the back of your head. Your face comes out, then your brain comes out. It's some brutal stuff going on there so uh the character is no joke he's definitely a powerhouse but an interesting thing about garris was his attacks i mean a lot of his attacks have to do with sand summoning walls and all this stuff and it made me wonder if they're going to bring back tremor or not because i don't think they're going to bring him back i'd be surprised if he comes back but a lot of his moves seem similar to tremor i mean with the whole like rocks or summoning all these walls and whatnot um, especially when he some of the two hammers and they just hit the opponent like in the in the middle or whatever. It it just made me think if they're gonna bring back the character or not. Um, so 
I don't think Trimmer is going to return. I mean, I'll be surprised if he does. But if he does, hypothetically, I don't think he's going to play the same as he did in X. But at the same time, I, I just don't think so. <laughs> I mean, I see Garrison. I see how he fights and is similar to uh, Trimmer in some ways. In some ways, not in all ways, just some. So outside of that, they revealed that there's going to be a collector's edition. And that uh, it came out later on that the collector's edition is going to be $300. And, well, plus tax. Uh, that collector's edition is really for the hardcore fan. Now, I myself am a fan of Mortal Kombat. But I have my gripes about this collector's edition i mean i wanted a collector's edition i just didn't want this kind of collector's edition and um for those who are a fan of scorpion hey you're gonna love it it has a mask it comes with a steel book with a medallion and the premium edition of the game which includes i will assume the season pass and and the game itself but 300 dollars for a mask i don't even know if you could wear this mask and even if you could wear the mask is it worth 300 bucks plus tax? <sighs> For me personally, I don't know if I'm going to purchase this collector's edition. I most likely is, am probably going to pass on this collector's edition. Not because it looks bad or anything like that. But it, it doesn't fit my taste. It's not what I wanted. I didn't want a mask. <laughs> I mean, in Mortal Kombat 11, in most of the stuff they show so far, they show a lot of Dark Raiden, right? So you think that they would make a Dark Raiden statue for Mortal Kombat 11. It just makes sense. I mean, it obviously the story is going to be revolved around certain characters, but Dark Raiden is definitely going to be one of those characters. So it would make sense for a Dark Raiden statue instead of a scorpion mask. But I have to remind myself that Ed Boon's favorite character is Scorpion, and he would assume that... There's a lot of people out there that like Scorpion, which given, yes, there's a lot of people out there that do like Scorpion as a character. I mean, I'm one of them, but I don't like Scorpion that much, man. I mean, Mortal Kombat 10 had, you know, a Scorpion statue in their collector's edition. That didn't bother me. I like that statue. I, I still have it. I mean, it was, it was a cool collector's edition. And then you had Mortal Kombat 9, which had their, you know, Scorpion and Sub-Zero, like, book stands or whatever. In the U.S. version, anyways, because each each country had like a different version for what it seemed like. But then, Mortal Kombat 11 is like, hey, let's give you a scorpion mask, so that you couldn't add a Kami Dogu instead, or I don't know, a Dark Raiden statue, something else that wasn't scorpion related this time around. <sighs> I, I, it, this is my opinion. I mean, and and I. Excuse me. I know it sounds like I'm bashing on this collector's edition. That's not what I'm doing. It's th it looks nice. It looks like a good collector's edition. But at the same time, to me anyways, it's not worth $300 for a mask. Technically, I, I will assume it's like $200 for the mask. $100 for, for the game, the premium edition with the season pass or whatever. So, whatever the case is, it's just not worth that much. In my opinion, it, it should be... It should have been, excuse me, a different item, not a scorpion item. It should have been something to better represent what Mortal Kombat 11 is going to be about. And that obviously, you know, Dark Raiden, it just makes sense for them to, it would have made sense in my opinion, for them to have a Dark Raiden statue. But um, that's not what happened. I mean, damn, for once, do a collector's edition with Sub-Zero. Sub-Zero. <laughs> Sub-Zero statue. I mean, come on. It, it, it could have easily, easily pick so many other characters or, or did something unique. I mean, given the mask is unique, but it's not my kind of unique. It's just like, why? You know, but if you're in the mask, that's obviously going to be up your alley. If you're a hardcore collector, and you, it might be a risky investment. But if you're a hardcore fan of Mortal Kombat... Uh, you know, obviously Mortal Kombat, and especially if Scorpion is your favorite character, this this is probably going to be up your alley. The question really comes down to is, uh, do you have the money? <laughs> I mean, for me personally, though, um, I don't think I'll be picking up this collector's edition just because of its price. Um, I don't feel like, you know, two hundred dollars for a mask. Uh, eh, it's a bit steep. Not a bit steep. A bit steep. Um, 
And Scorpion. I mean, I got nothing against Scorpion, but damn, Ed Boon. Damn, the other room. Really? Again? Scorpion? Shit. So many characters. So many. Scorpion. Oh, man. But it is what it is. Collector's Edition looks nice. Uh, the price, well, speaks for itself. I'll leave it as that. Now, uh, yeah, I'm getting towards the end of this. Overall, the reveal event was was a good event. It, it, it seemed pretty good. Um, hit and miss for me anyway, seeing certain things. You know, I wasn't uh, fond of the roster size. I, I wasn't, uh, clearly wasn't completely happy with the collector's edition, at least with the choice they made. But um, outside of that, it was a good reveal event, and I do look forward to the story from Mortal Kombat 11 the most. That, that's what I'm looking forward to. The story seems like it's going to be pretty damn interesting. And um, that's what I'm pretty much looking forward to seeing. And as well as the reveals as uh, time goes on. Because clearly there's going to be more reveals of characters and whatnot leading into its release. So I'm curious to see what else they're going to show later on as well. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Anyways, feel free to comment down below y'all thoughts of the reveal event. Do y'all like it? Do y'all hate it? Whatever. I mean... Have a conversation down below if y'all feel like it. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It is greatly appreciated. Also, drop a like if you like what you've seen here, of course. And as always, this is Rayuka here saying thanks for watching. And until next time, everyone, sign off.